Hi everyone, welcome again. In this video, we will see how to work with Spring and Redis. We'll start with a high level introduction of Redis. We'll see what Redis is. After that, we'll see how to get it up and running on our local machine. Once the setup part is complete, we'll move on to set up a Spring Boot project in order to work with the Redis. So let's get started. If we talk about what is Redis, then there is a nice definition on this Redis homepage. It says, Redis is the open source in-memory data store used by millions of developers as a database, cache, streaming engine and message broker. First of all, Redis is open source and second, this is an in-memory data store. Notice the keyword data store that means it can be used to store some data and it is in-memory that means it doesn't have to persist the data in the files same as databases. Redis can keep all the data in memory so this is ultra fast but it can also store the data in the files as well. Redis is horizontally scalable. It means we can add more machines in order to get more powerful Redis cluster. Redis is highly available with automatic failover. It means if the primary goes down for whatever reasons, it can automatically get another primary up. Talking about the use cases, we can use Redis as a database as we talked about because it is a data store. We can also use Redis as a cache. In fact, this is the most common use case of Redis. Redis is a very fast cache which is used by many systems. It can also be used as a streaming engine and a message broker. If we open the Redis homepage, this is the homepage of Redis. Here you can find a lot more details about the use cases and how to use Redis, what it is all about. Notice this is in-memory data structure that we will see what do we mean by in-memory data structures. As we talked about, it is in-memory data store, so it keeps the data set in memory for fast access, but it can also persist all the data to permanent storage in order to recover it. We also talked about how Redis is horizontally scalable and it can scale to million of nodes. And irrespective of deployment, whether it is standalone or clustered, it is highly available due to its automatic failover. So if the primary goes down, it can get another primary up and running automatically. Talking about the use cases, we saw that we can use Redis as a data store. We can also use it as a caching or to store the session. We can use it as a streaming engine and as a message broker. Now that we understand Redis on a very high level, let's see how to get it up and running on our machine. So if we go to the get started section here, here we can find all the details related to the operating system, how to install Redis on Linux, Mac OS or Windows. Because I'm using Windows, so let's go to install Redis on Windows, but you can just follow the instructions. So here the documentation says that Redis is not officially supported on Windows. To install Redis on Windows, we need to first enable WSL2, which is Windows subsystem for Linux. And then we need to install Redis on that Linux environment that we configure with WSL. If you don't know anything about WSL, then I recommend you watch this video. In this video, we talked about how to enable WSL on a Windows system and how to install Ubuntu on a Windows system using WSL. So you can use this video to understand all about WSL, which is required in order to install Redis on that subsystem. And after that, you can just follow the instruction documented here. Another way is to use the Docker desktop so we can install the Docker desktop and just use any Docker image to run the Redis. So I'm going to follow the second approach. For that, you need to install the Docker desktop. Again, if you don't have the Docker desktop, then watch this video where I talked about how to install Docker desktop and how to get it up and running. So let me launch my Docker desktop and we'll run Redis as a Docker image. I've launched my Docker desktop and it is now starting a Docker engine which will run on WSL on my Windows machine. So it's important that you install and activate WSL. So let it start and once it's complete, we'll try to run Redis. Okay, so this is up now. And here you see this search bar which says that search for images, containers, volumes, extensions and more. So we need to search a Docker image for Redis. To do that, we can simply search Redis. And you can see that this is the Redis image, official Redis image and tag which is latest. So let's pull and run this image. I'm going to hit run. 
and it says that container name so let's name it redis 101 whose port is fine whose path everything is fine simply hit run and this will download the image if it's not available or already present on your system if yes then it will simply run that image so what it did it downloaded the redis image from the docker repository and it ran a new instance of redis using that image so we see that the redis is now up it is ready to accept the connections as a docker container we can inspect it here you can find the relevant information related to that docker image or docker container and we have the terminal access so that we can interact with this running instance of redis so let's try to do that let's use redis cli in order to access the terminal because we need to access the redis let's try to set some values and read some values from the redis we'll see about the data types of string probably in the next video but for now we can set some values so we can use the set command we need to provide a key so i will say my key and the value my value and if i hit enter then what it means basically it has set my value to this key so we can now read the key back we can say get me the value of my key and this is my value that we stored here so we know that redis is up and running and it is working fine now let's move on and configure a spring boot project to work with this redis container 